No matter what happens in the future, Steve Cooper will always be a legend with a capital L. He's the second most important manager in Forest history after Brian Clough, and in many ways, became a victim of his own success. To take a side bottom of the championship into the Premier League for the first time in 23 years was simply staggering, and to keep them up while having a dressing room full of new players to work with almost just as impressive. Ironically, if Forrest never got promoted and were currently in and around a playoff spot, Cooper would still be in a job, and that just goes to show you how cruel bastard of a game football can be at times. Aside from everything Cooper did for Forrest on the pitch, it's equally as important to note his impact off it. He made an effort to go above and beyond his duties as a manager by understanding Nottingham and its people, and that's a bond I suspect will live on forever. The trademark fist pumps will be missed by one and all at the city ground, and I wouldn't at all be surprised to see them at Selhurst Park in the coming weeks. Unfortunately, all good things come to an end, and from a purely cold and logical viewpoint, I do believe this was the right time to part ways with Cooper. Needless to say, that's a bitter pill to swallow and an assessment of mine that many of you might even disagree with, but ultimately, it's a results-based business, and one win in 13 coupled with a 17th place standing going into Christmas is nowhere near good enough for a club that spent as much as Forrest have in the last 18 months. However, the entire process could have been handled far more professionally. As per The Athletic, Maranakis hasn't spoken to Cooper in weeks and didn't even have the courtesy to tell the man to his face about the decision to sack him, instead leaving that to Chief Football Officer Ross Wilson, which really is nothing short of a disgrace. That being said, in regards to the decision itself, there's no room for sentiment in football, and as Dennis, who's a Villa supporting subscriber on this channel pointed out, Dean Smith's dismissal brought out much the same emotions amongst the Villa faithful, but look where they are now under Unai Emery. Another example that springs to mind is Nigel Atkins at Southampton. Every man and their dog couldn't believe it happened, yet Pochettino came in and took the club to a whole new level. Obviously, the opposite happened not so long ago with Bielsa at Leeds, so only time will tell whether there'll be any long-term payoffs, but what I'm getting at is that change could very well be for the better. Clearly, the writing was on the wall following a 5-0 defeat to Fulham, a game in which Maranakis left the ground long before the final whistle had blown, and thrown his pass into a bush outside Craven Cottage. Perhaps the only real surprise was that a trigger-happy owner like Maranakis gave Cooper an additional couple of weeks to try and turn things around. In an ideal world, either Lopetigue, who turned down Forrest's offer, which I believe speaks volumes about the difficult environment any coach will have under the current ownership, or Glasner, who guided both Wolfsburg and Frankfurt into the Champions League, would be the ones taking the hot seat. Given that hasn't transpired, a part of me does wonder if Cooper was relieved of his duties a bit too early. In my eyes, the two aforementioned names were clear upgrades, whereas Nuno is, at best, a sideways move, which begs the question as to whether the new manager bounce will be worth the long-term implications that are to follow. Moving on to Nuno himself, I do believe he's a very good manager. It's easy to forget he took Wolves from the Championship to Europe because of his short stint at Tottenham, which in itself came with plenty of caveats. He was given just 4 months and a grand total of 10 Premier League games to prove his credentials in North London. He won 5 of them, and even received the Manager of the Month award during his short tenure, and I'm fairly certain he wouldn't have lost his job if Antonio Conte didn't suddenly show interest in taking over, as he was Daniel Levy's first choice all along. I mean for God's sake, Nuno didn't even get to bring his own backroom stuff with him, so in many ways, what's destined for failure. He's managed sides with European pedigree in Porto and Valencia, which, coupled with his vast experience in the Prem, should put him in good stead to keep Forrest up. A big part of the reason Nuno appeals to the Forrest hierarchy is that he's purely a head coach. At Wolves, he accepted other people would be buying players, and his job was to build chemistry and find a tactical setup which suited the squad. As I touched on in a previous video, which you can access via the top right hand corner of your screen, there are also a few in the dressing room who will be grateful for a fresh start. Club captain Joe Worrell has been frozen out of the first team picture following a disagreement with Cooper and may get a clean slate. Andrew Omabamidele and Andre Santos haven't started a league game all season. Nuno Tavares and Gonzalo Montiel, two fullback signings who had prompted excitement when they arrived, have only been given one league start apiece, so hopefully they'll all be raring to go now. Nuno's deal is just for two and a half years, so he'll have to get results sharpish, and one can only hope that he hasn't gone into semi-retirement mode because of his time in Saudi Arabia, which is currently the home of over-the-hill footballers looking for a final payday. I get the feeling he'll have a chip on his shoulder about being written off while at Tottenham, and look forward to seeing how he gets on. Personally, I don't enjoy watching the brand of football he plays in the slightest, and would have loved to see a more progressive coach come in, but beggars can't be choosers, and a free agent like Nuno was always going to be an easier deal to make mid-season than someone who's currently employed elsewhere. Do let me know your own take down below, and I'll catch you in the next one folks. Peace.